Hi, um, my name is Katrina Lewis. I wanted to talk to you today about the value of being a volunteer. Um, I will start a little bit about my background. I've worked in sports development and community, community and wellbeing for the past 15 years. Um, I started off as an athletic development officer, creating pathways for athletic talent to grassroots to elite level in Luton. And then I progressed into um, health and wellbeing. Um, so creating projects and delivering projects to um, better our communities. So raising um, participation in areas that had inequalities. So that could be women, um, people from minority groups, young people, people um, maybe struggling with what we used to know as post-Cold Wars, et cetera, et cetera. So I worked um, that for many, many years and uh, thoroughly enjoyed the, the work and the challenges that that brought. It's very, very enriching. And as a, a woman coming from Belfast, um, I moved here when I was 16. Um, and I moved because a lack of opportunities and the tensions that were there during the Troubles. Some of you may not know anything about that, but um, during those years, I just felt it was better to seek a um, better life elsewhere and ended up in beautiful Luton <laughs> in England. And it has been such an enriching experience meeting so many different people from all across the world. Uh, Luton is a super diverse town full of richness and culture and so many different people. And I absolutely love that. Um, I feel the wealth of that. And of course, there's challenges with deprivation and inequality. And luckily, through my role, I was able to get involved in, you know, being a positive change of that. Lots of our projects, um, you know, were funded through the PCC, which is the Police Crime Commissioners, or Sport England through Active Luton is, is who my employer is. Um, and then, you know, 15 years later, I then went part-time because I have some other um, commitments outside of work, involved in sport as well, but outside of my role of Active Luton. And I also manage a leisure centre, so small community facilities for my company. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm missing my community work. So um, I, through the first lockdown, I saw what Kick Off with Three were doing, which is an amazing organization, working with young people and creating pathways um, for young people to gain experience through sports and music and um, literature, etc. So I just felt what they were doing was um, what I believe in and holding people accountable for creating positive action. Um, and that is what I actually feel. So rather than just talk about the issues, you know, do a little something or a big something about it. Um, and so therefore I got involved with Kick Off at Three as a volunteer. And then all of a sudden I was an ambassador. <laughs> um, and, you know, you think to yourself sometimes, oh, what can I offer? You know, um, I want to be part of something that is what I believe in. And what I just then thought was, what's my skill set? So, you know, I'm used to running facilities. I have health and safety knowledge. I have community cohesion knowledge. I have project management knowledge, um, just networking knowledge. I know people, they know people. So it was, you know, I'm a people person. So just, you know, with, with that um, amount of experience, I just thought, well, I'll just offer what I can, a little or a lot, whatever I can, you know, do in my spare time. And I love it. And, you know, all around us, we see people, you know, doing amazing work in the communities all across the country, to be fair. I mean, I travel a lot when I can safely. And you see projects and people doing everything they can do to make their community a better place. And whatever their target group is, whether it's older people, younger people, people who have inequality, women, girls, whatever it is, and when you're a volunteer and you connect to something that you feel passionate about, you see tremendous um, impact on community and that sense of love and well-being that's so often sidetracked that we are just bombarded with negative images on television, on social media, and almost like sometimes it's like divide and conquer rather than create a village to create a community spirit. You know, it does really take a village 
to really look out for each other. And it doesn't matter if you live in a city or a town or whatever, you know, looking out for someone else's kids to make sure they're safe, looking out for your neighbour, checking if they're okay, saying hello to someone who walks down the street doesn't cost anything. And it does create that ambience that people care, smiling at your a person that doesn't know you down, walking down the street. It can be as simple as that. That smile or that friendly greeting can mean the world to someone who, who you don't know, who might be going through something that may have a mental health issue, they might be experiencing loneliness and isolation. And just something as simple as smiling and being friendly or getting involved in a voluntary organization to offer any skill set that you have, even if it's a few hours a week or a few hours a month or once a year or all the time, if it's a lot of your energy, a little bit of your energy, whatever it is, that impact that you create by joining with other people who share the same values as you to create a better community for all of us and for our youth especially, that are our future, you know, that is just absolutely priceless. And I think like when I was asked to do this talk, you know, it's like, what do I do? You know, I'm just a, a regular person doing regular stuff. And it is the regular people doing regular stuff getting together that creates a louder movement and I think a powerful movement in your chosen area um, and shouldn't be underestimated. It's like many voices will be heard rather than the little lone voice uh, way back no one can hear. But rather, what I mean by that is you can read an article or you can think, oh, that's terrible. You see something on TV or whatever social situation that you're thinking that's not right. But if you don't do something about it, if you don't be part of the solution, then you're just the quiet voice in the background rather than joining the many voices that can create change. So, you know, I thought, yes, I will do the, the um, interview and, and maybe just speak for the regular people doing regular things. And, um, and just, you know, going into the kickoff of three um, ambassador work that I do, you know, working for Michael and Ashley, who are two men, uh, London-based, um, Michael's in the Met Police and Ashley drives a bus and has previously had a sports company, so still uses that skill set to engage young people. And they run fantastic events um, and engage um, community policing teams around the UK and in Northern Ireland um, to, to hold them accountable, to, to come to action and get their local young people involved in sport, particularly um, football. And they all hold, you know, local competitions and then they feed into a national event. Um, you know, and I just think that's amazing because such a bad reputation between our policing forces across the country and our community. You know, I believe they need to be held more accountable. Um, I believe they need to be doing more. No matter what they're doing, there's always room for more work to be done with our local communities. And... There's people out there challenging the processes. There's policymakers challenging the processes. There's lawyers, there's, doctors, there's, there's people who are academics doing their bit to create change. And all the way down to grassroots level, we can all be part of this process to hold systems accountable for creating a better change and a better future for our communities and especially our young people and our people who are you know, economically deprived, et cetera. You know, if we don't hold these people accountable and systems accountable, you know, things are never going to change. So as a volunteer, we gather our voices and we gather our energy and we gather our little bit of effort that we can contribute to creating positive change. So that's why I believe in volunteering. <laughs> Lecture time, I suppose. But um, I just think that, you know, people sometimes get overwhelmed by the thought of becoming a volunteer or getting involved in something because they think it might be just too much or overwhelming or they're asked to do too many things. But it's not like that. And you can just set your boundaries out at the beginning and say, I've got this amount of time or effort to give to this cause. And people will be more than grateful to take whatever that you want to be able to offer them to, to, to create the outcome that they want. So please do, if you ever do feel like in, in becoming a volunteer, you know, get, get a, a social action thing that you like to be interested in. And not only is it enriching for the group that's um, trying to create a change, it's also enriching for the, the person who's volunteering to connect with like-minded people. 
and you know you can be a volunteer as a young person a middle-aged person an older person there'll be value in all of it um, so my quest to you is to have a little think about what you can do in your local community just, just to make something positive a positive change or a positive call to create that more village like looking after each other ambience you know or or uh, yeah ambience is probably the best word to take because so many people communicate in different ways but you just want to feel safe and you want to feel like you're connected to other people that you that you're with you know so um yeah so basically that's my my story as a volunteer